Today I'm going to show you how you can make a cold lock and um, I'm not talking about the actual in-game cold locks. Now I'm talking about a cold lock using counters. And you might think that that's not possible because it allows pass through when it reaches the number. So if I put this one up to, I think it was seven. Yes, you can see that this light blinks. If I take it up to eight, it's no longer blinking. If I take it down to six, it's also not blinking. This one only works when it's on seven. Normally with counters, you have that when it reaches the number you set it to, it's gonna allow pass through. But it, it doesn't stop there. It continues beyond that number you set it to. So it has to be at least the number you set it to. I have set this one to three. So if I flick this one three times, the blue light starts blinking. The problem with this is that if I go further up to four, or even up to five, or as much as 99, 9,000, whatever, this is gonna continue to blink because this one is past three. So what you have to do is make it stop if you go beyond the number you set it to. And it's the easy way to do that. First, what we're gonna do is make it a lot quicker to increment and decrement the counter. And for that, you wanna have a timer, a blocker below it, and a electrical branch on top of it. Take the output of the blocker into the input of the timer, output of the timer into the input of the electrical branch, take the branch out down to the block pass through, and then give the entire thing power. Now you can see that I can click the timer, and even though this one is set to 10 seconds, it instantly turns back off. This means I can spam this one, which means if I take a counter, put it next to it, and I give the counter power, I can take the power out of the electrical branch, into the increment, and I can just spam this one to increment it. This makes it a lot faster than using a switch, which works perfectly for a cold lock. Now you can see that I've added two of the timer circuits, one at the bottom for decrementing the counter and one at the top for incrementing the counter. Now we just need to hook that up. First, we give the bottom one power, then we give the top one power, and you also want to give the counter power, like so. Then we'll take the exact same thing with this circuit as you did before, and just hook it up so this works. Then you also want to do the exact same thing with the top one. Like so. Something is not hooked up, I can see. There we go. Now that's hooked up. Then you can take the output of these electrical branches. Take it down to increment from the top one and to the decrement of the bottom one. Now you can see I can take it up and I can take it down. Now we need to add the actual functionality that blocks the circuit from working if it's a number beyond what you set it to. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna set this one to four. Then for this to work, you will have to disconnect the power outs of both electrical branches. You take another electrical branch and put it next to it. Do that on both. And transfer the power over to those electrical branches. Now you have two outputs. Take the branch out of the bottom one into the decrement counter. 
take the branch out from the top one into the increment counter. Then we take a blocker and place it towards your source where you want the output to go. Take the output of the counter into the power in of the blocker and the output of the blocker over to the actual area where, that you want to power when it's correct. So in this case, I'm going to power the light. You could have a door, you could have a trap. That's totally up to you. Then, you want to take a second counter. Hide it away from this. I'm going to give that power. Once that has power, I'm going to set that to one number above this one. So I set this one to 4, which means this one have to be 5. Take the output of this one, run it over to a block pass-through. Then you would take the last output you have on the electrical branches. The bottom one goes to decrement counter. And the top one goes to increment counter. Which means if I flip that one up, you can see both go up. If I take this one, it goes down. So that means if I take this one up to the correct number, which is 4, it starts blinking. If I take it one more, it's not working. Because this one blocks it when it reaches 5. This one still allows pass-through, but it's being blocked by that one. Now that we have created one functioning counter that only works with one number, you can go ahead and add a second one. Now I've added the second one. So if I go ahead and take this back up to 4, which is the correct number, you can see this one turns green. If I take it to 5, it's red. Take it down, it's green. This one is set to 3. So if I take this one up to 3, you can see this one is green. Now I want that to power a light. What I could do is have two lights and have this one go to one light that would work. But in this case, I want to power the light only if both are correct. And there is a way to do that. You can use the AND switch. And if you take the output of the blockers into the inputs of the AND switch, you will see that it only allows power to go through if both are correct. If you want to add more numbers, you can just use the exact same circuit as shown here and use more AND switches and connect them back up. If you use four numbers, you will have to use three AND switches. Reason being that you have two numbers going in here, two numbers going in here. The outputs of these will have to go into other AND switches and then the output goes in there. So now I can take this one to the correct one, and this one is full. So the next two numbers would also have to be correct for this one to be green, which turns this one green, which allows the power to go through. But in this case, I am only using two numbers to demonstrate that this is a working cold lock. If one number is wrong, it's not functioning. If I turn this number correct, it's not functioning. If both are correct, it functions. Of course, when you make this in a base or anywhere else, you want to have it a lot cleaner, which means you will move all the electrical branches and blockers behind a wall so it's not seen. I will show you how that looks. This is how it will look if you have the blockers and electrical branches hidden away. Thank you guys for watching. If there's any questions, anything at all, Put it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer it. If you want me to make a video where it's optimized, then uh, please let me know in the comments. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a great day.